presented by Phoenix Rising. In this video, we'll be showing you how to modify a Leupold Tracker 2 and make it into a thermal monocular. Phoenix Rising here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to convert a Leupold Tracker 2 HD, or probably any of the Tracker series when it comes right down to it, from a device with a display screen like a smartwatch or a smartphone that you have to look at from a distance to a monocular that you can hold right up close and personal like a traditional optic. So stay tuned, original content only on this channel. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do. Okay, uh, first I think we probably ought to go over why we're really doing this. Aside from the fact some people like to hold things right up here like a real optical device to, to look through them. Uh, there's actually a more practical angle on this and I know for myself being a little bit older that you know as a lot of times as you age your up close focus distance gets a little farther away, a little harder to see things up close and that's kind of the case with me. I use reading glasses a lot of times especially if I'm looking at fine print or you know something small where I need to see details up close. I'll put on a pair of reading glasses but I don't need glasses full time. So if you're in that category uh, you may have looked at this tracker and said you know yeah this is a pretty cool device but I don't want a little screen, I don't want a smartwatch screen that I have to try and look at because it's small and I have to hold it out farther. Okay so there's you know and I have to hold it out farther. Okay, so there's, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So, loophole really doesn't give you any options for correcting that and giving you a viable way to use it other than just holding it away from your face. I'm going to give you something better, or at least different. <laughs> Maybe not better, you'll have to be the judge of that. So, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I went out, I procured a whole bunch of different photography loops, things like that, thinking, okay, what can I put behind this to make this go to this? Uh, any, to make this go to this. Uh, in the end, I came up with two solutions, and I'm going to share both of them with you. I'll put links to these products down below in the uh, description. If I can embed them in the video, I might try that, although that... We'll see how that goes. Not too uh, savvy on that yet. Now for some parts information. I'm putting uh, all the different parts, showing you some pictures, as well as what they're called on Amazon. And basically, the scope cap's going to run you around $10, and either the loop or the uh, jeweler's loop will run you about another $10. So you're looking at $20, maybe $30 if you have Amazon Prime for, for enough to do either of these mods. Uh, and, of course, I'll put the actual links in the uh, description so that you can should be able to hopefully click on those directly. Option 1. Using a Carson 10.5x focusable loop. Okay, so let's uh, talk about our parts needed and our first option. Now, uh, first off, you're going to need a 42mm scope flip-type cap. Okay, and not just any particular uh, cap, but a more specific model, okay, or one that at least is very similar to this one. Now, I'll post a link down in the video below, or in the description and all that. If I can embed a link here, I'll embed a link too. I don't know how well that might work. But, uh, but anyway, this is not the standard cap that comes with the tracker. This isn't a loophole cap. And uh, here's a smaller cap that goes on the front, and I want to show you why it won't work. And that is, if you'll notice, on your cap for the tracker, it sticks up and then the cap flips over it, kind of like a, a lid on a Coke bottle, and snaps with the cap being going around the outer dim dimension of the ring, okay? That won't work for the mods we're going to do. Instead, you need one where the cap is more like a plug and it actually has a recessed ring on the inside diameter that it snaps down into, okay? And this ring inside is hard plastic. The cap itself is rubber, but the ring inside is hard plastic, as is the boss for the flip-top cap. Now, uh, I'll, like I said, I'll give you the link for this particular one. If you can find one very similar, it should work too, okay? If nothing else, you might have to, if it's, it might be too loose, or you might have to trim a little plastic or a little more plastic, depending, if you get a different one than this. So, so there it is. There's the original part. Now, 
the first mod we're going to do is going to be using this, which is a Carson 10.5X focusing loop, okay? Uh, this looks awful big to be using with the tracker, uh, and that's what I thought at first. And I just ordered a few different optical kind of loops and things like that to try and find something and a way to make this thing more usable in a monocular type fashion. So uh, when I first got this scoop like loop, scoop, <laughs> uh, scoop loop, like uh, like I said, I I didn't think it was going to work, but I like the fact that the lens was a good diameter on both sides, so I should be able to get a really good view of the back of the tracker. And when I held it up, I found that, you know, hey, this get, does really give a magnified view and works very well, but it's just too cumbersome. Uh, as I got to looking at this particular loop, what I found was that, okay, I'm thinking, well, okay, do I got to cut this plastic off? How, what, uh, how can I make this work? Uh, what I found was there's actually an inside collar that goes around the threaded portion of the lens assembly, and that just slips into place with two locking tabs, to hold all this together. So if you take a jeweler screwdriver on this loop, there's two recesses here, just go in, push the tab in, pull it out a little bit, do the same for the other side, and it will come apart like this. Uh, almost like this, okay? So here we have our assembly, and you can tell, okay, it focuses, it has a collar on the inside. Now I will say, uh, if you notice a little bit of blue on here, that's a little bit of masking tape that I put on here. And the reason for that is this collar is actually a split ring, okay? It has, it has pins to hold it so it lines up and kind of stays together, but it's held in place by inserting it into the recess on the plastic, and then it's held in the plastic by these two little locking, spring-loaded locking tabs, okay? Or they're not really spring, they're just spring out little plastic locking tabs. So here's our loop. You'll have to, when it comes apart, these two pieces will fall off. Just put a little tape on there. Uh, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your scope cap, you're going to cut the uh, cut the actual cap portion off, and what you're going to find is there's about a five millimeter, four or five millimeter lip on the inside of this where your cap would lock in place, and uh, it is going to be hard plastic. Now when you first try to put this in here, what you'll find is the 42 millimeter section that goes over the end of the loop hold is like, this is like way loose. Now if you just cut this hard plastic off, sure you could fit all this together, uh, just wrap some tape or whatever you wanted to increase the diameter of this and you could do a slip fit. But that's not the best way to go. Uh, instead, what I did was I chose to take a razor knife or utility knife, box cutter, whatever you're familiar with calling it, a razor knife, and I just shaved the inside diameter of this rim on the inside of this. Took a little bit off, said, uh, nope, still won't fit, a little bit off, a little bit off, and okay, now I got this to where it just starts. And this is very slightly tapered, almost like a pipe fitting kind of way. And, uh, and it will fit. And these locking tabs will actually go in, spring back out behind this rim that you've been shaving down and lock this thing in place to where it's not going to come apart. You don't have to glue it or anything. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to shove this in here and you'll hear it click. Not very loud, I hope you heard that. It was just a very faint click click. But now, okay, unless I take my pocket knife, which I had to do to, to show you this, make this video, take this thing back apart, you gotta pry it, you've got to pry it back over these lips or spring load these little tabs back in to get this thing back apart. So now you have your assembly, and again, it's 42 millimeter, fits over the back of the loophole very nicely. And you can also focus it, and again, if your eyes are different than mine, uh, no, you don't have to twist it or maneuver it. Instead, you just use the built-in focus. This is also a nice soft rubber, so, you know, in use, uh, it rests up against your eye rather nicely. Uh, what else could I say about it? It's, it is a little bit hard. The edges of the screen are just a hair fuzzy, and that's just because of the nature of the way this loop works. You're you're right at the expanse of what it can visually show you. And I will say that this mod and the, and the next one, both of these, your screen's gonna be kind of blocky, okay? Because keep in mind, no matter what you do with this particular device, it has a 390 by 390 display screen. Uh, if you've looked through any of the fluoroscopes or you know, whether it's ATN, Sightmark, any of the digital type scopes that have a display screen in the back, your most of the newer ones are all 12, 1280 by 960 resolution. I mean, they're high definition. This is 390 by 390, so you're gonna your 
you're pushing the limits of the display screen as far as what you're going to see, but you are going to be able to see it clearly very usable, okay? So there's our first mod, okay? There you go, loop old 10.5x loop modified to be a viewer and turn your tracker into monocular. Now let's go on to our second mod. Option two, using a 30x jeweler's loop. Okay, so here we are with our second option. And in this case, we're going to use our same flip flip open scope cap and we're not going to do any shaving or manipulation to the inside of it but we are going to cut off the lug on here I just left it on here so I had something to show you all uh, how it originally looked so you're going to use the same scope cap and the second part you're going to need is a 30 X by 36 millimeter jeweler's loop now I looked at different versions and I actually have ordered a couple of these I don't even know if I even ordered them from the same vendor it's just like a lot of the stuff on Amazon and eBay you'll have a bunch of different vendors they might be calling it slightly different things but you look at it and say well it's, it's the same stuff okay now in this case this one says 30 by 36 and it says made in Germany now uh, here's a box for it, very generic Chinese looking box and uh, on the decal on it it says portable 30x jewelers kings uh, textile fabric new made in China yes yeah, a heck of a description there so but anyway uh, if you get one of these when you order it the made in Germany part hey that's kind of cool looking but what the hell right uh, what you do want to look for and pay attention though is find one that looks like this one and I'll insert some pictures but it needs to have a little rim a little lip, lip with a recess on the side that's going to go next to the tracker, the non-viewing side, okay? And the reason for that is because that's going to fit perfectly inside of the scope cap. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put it together so I can show you. This one, this is I've taken it apart a few times, so it's getting easier, but it still takes some effort. So okay, there we go. So now we've got this in here. It's not going to come apart easily but it does free spin so you'll probably want to put a little Gorilla Glue or Epoxy or even maybe a dab of Super Glue to kind of lock this in place and that's it there you go now you have, you have your assembly now when you put this on what you're going to find is that for me anyway when I put it on it's a little bit out of focus shoved all the way on there so I'll go ahead and just twist it back off a little bit while looking through it until I get it to where it's perfect for my eyes and then just leave it okay that's it leave it you're you're good to go you have now have a monocular and I do like this a little bit better than the uh, than the photography loop the Carson loop here because the Carson loop to me although it's more comfortable and you can kind of rest it on the bridge of your nose and a little bit of usability there and you can focus it without having to slide it around on there it does seem that the very outer edge of the screen is right at the limits of field of view on the Carson where this actually is, you're seeing black around the screen so it has a little wider field of view you're not missing anything or you don't quite get the edge distortion now that being said uh, I'll try and take some pictures maybe to show you but uh, two things about it is first off uh, on both of these I found using the 1x setting is the best for these because they magnify the screen enough that you know you, you're not struggling to see anything or see details and so why not get all the detail that your sensor has for one and uh, and that also fills your view up plenty so I, I found that I, whereas I normally go 1.7x to do full screen if I'm just holding it out there I like the 1x with these scopes and keep in mind you are going to have a kind of a blocky image because this is a 390 by 390 display screen which like I said it's a good high quality screen I like the screen but if you're thinking you're going to look through this and it's going to look like looking through a FLIR thermal site or you know something like a SiteMark Wraith or an ATNX site where you've got a, this real pretty LCD display that you're looking at keep in mind those displays are going to be like FLCOS or whatever uh, maybe 1280 by 960 or a very high resolution screen this is going to get blocky because it's a limited resolution and you're magnifying the heck out of it so a little bit of a limitation there but again it will make a whole new different way of using this a lot more usable for some folks that maybe otherwise would be struggling and uh, hey glad we could actually do this and show you this 
And this is original content. I've not seen anybody online. I didn't find any online resources for showing you how to do this to a tracker. So uh, this is original content. So do me a favor. If you, if you find value in this, like and subscribe to the channel. That will help me out. I've got enough view time to become monetized, but I don't have enough subscribers. So, hey, if you do have a YouTube uh, username or whatever, hey, click that subscribe button. I promise I won't spam you. I won't be sending you daily cute puppy or cute kitten videos. We'll just be doing reviews and other content that hopefully you would find valuable. So, uh, thanks for watching, and until next time. I hope you enjoyed this video on turning the Leupold Tracker 2 into a thermal monocular. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, and while it's free for download for personal or educational use, please link and give credit. And remember, this video is not for commercial use. Thanks for watching. Copyright 2020 by Phoenix Rising.